we, we know a little bit more about Parley's uh, famine life than we do about Orson's, um, simply because Parley's uh, wives uh, tended to keep a little better records than Orson's did. Um, and I think Orson was hurt by the apostasy of his, of his namesake uh, in southern Utah. Um, uh, not for any immoral reasons, he just sort of talked himself out of the church and, and um, uh, probably influenced by, by his first wife as well. And she had kind of an uneven relationship with the church and probably destroyed uh, uh, some of his early diaries later in her life. Um, but anyway, those were burdens that Orson had to, had to bear with all the other assignments he was given. Orson crossed, I don't know how many times, probably uh, seven or eight times he had to cross the Atlantic. Um, in one of the earliest crossings, we have the diary of, uh, or we have the, the letters. Uh, Heber C. Kimball wrote a letter to Vallette when they were crossing the, the Atlantic on, the, on their ship for the first time for their, for the, uh, uh, going on their British mission in 1839. And he says, uh, Brigham and I are sick most of the time, and we stay in our bunks. And he says, we look out a little hole, and we see we're on, suddenly we're on the top of the mountain, and then suddenly we're in the valley. And you can sort of get seasick just reading his letters with the, with the ship going up and down. He says, but Orson is out there on the deck sitting on a bale of hay, writing it back and forth on the ship deck. And so you see a, an individual who uh, seemed to make the best of, uh, of the situation. Um, but they took seriously what they did, but they had to have time to, to, uh, to grow. Uh, we have accounts of early Mormon converts in England who um, absolutely loved the apostles. Uh, even when their, when their children would come back on missions, they just had to know uh, what, was, what, what was Brother Brigham doing at home uh, when Brigham Young Jr. came on a mission to England years later. Uh, the saints sacrificed uh, because those early converts didn't have much. Often they were out of work or struggling with the consequences of the Industrial Revolution. They were capable, but they just were put out of work with, as machines became more common. And so when the apostles left, often they would give them gifts. They would have a party for them with cakes and other things, sometimes give them what they thought was uh, maybe their most uh, precious thing for them to take back or to give them a silk handkerchief to take home to their wives. or a piece of pottery perhaps to take home to their wives, just as their ability, that's almost their maximum ability to, to say thank you for, uh, for bringing the gospel into their lives.